Yeah? yeah? Right? Yes. Yeah. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. Everyone, welcome to another session in Jam's virtual Drupal camp. I have got Jesus Manuel Olivas talking with me today and presenting for you today. Oh, now, thank you for the invitation. Oh, it's my pleasure. Um, this Jam's Drupal camp thing is an offshoot of the Acquia podcast where I get to talk with a lot of smart people about Drupal, about open source, community, technology, business kind of things. And I get to see a bunch of Drupal Camp sessions a, during uh, the course of any given month. And I thought that it would be fun to highlight some, to make them more easily findable, and to sort of show them uh, quickly and easily to a broader audience of people. Hence, we have this event. Uh, Jesus and I spoke in New York City at the NYC camp not too long ago. And Jesus has a really, really interesting and really, really helpful programming tool for Drupal 8 developers. Now we go to the, um, the meat of the session. Jesus is going to present, talk about the incredible module generating code that he's been working on, uh, give us a bit of a demo. I am going to shut off my mic and sit in the background here. We have the Q&A open in the live Hangout for any of you watching. If you've got some questions along the way, we'll, we'll uh, be able to address those at the end. So uh, I'm going to sit back and geek out to Jesus' session. Jesus, you're on. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Let's, let me know if it looks fine. Looks good. It's good. OK, let, let me go ahead then. OK. So the session name is Introducing the Drupal 8 Console Scaffolding or Model Generator. So let me let me go ahead and start with this. Yep. Okay, well, I we already I already talked about myself, but I'm gonna just kinda do it again for this session. So my name is Jesus Manuel Olivas, I'm a web developer, see basically mostly working with Symphony and Drupal. So you can I've been working with Drupal for about five years now, but since the last two years, I've been doing more Symfony development than Drupal. That's what gets me here back to Drupal. Now the Drupal 8 is using Symfony console, comp I mean Symfony components. Uh, you can find me on my blog, jmolivas.com. You, you can see my code at GitHub, which is like GitHub, then slash jmolivas, or GitHub slash h and Drupal. h and Drupal is a place where some friends and myself in like releasing some some code. And you can also find me on Twitter at JMOLIVAS, also in Drupal Podcast, it's just a Drupal podcast in Spanish. And new project coming on is Drupal 8 links. Okay, let's let's talk about the Drupal console. What's what it is and what what is what can use for it. What is useful. And every modern framework nowadays provides helpers and tools for code generation. And those tools are really helpful for speeding up the process of starting a new project and avoid repetitive tasks. Talking Drupal lingo, those tasks are creating new modules or adding new functionality to a current, to a current one. Let's say I might want to add a new form to that module or a new block or maybe a new controller. So this, this tools or these generators or scaffolding tools helps to, to generate the base code for for this task. And, and basically the purpose of this Drupal 8 console project is to take advantage of Symfony console component as well as a tweak component to create a command line interface tool to generate modules in Drupal 8. Okay, where do where do I found where do I find this project? I mean, if you have a Drupal user account, you can find it in Drupal.org/project/console. If you don't, but you have a GitHub account, you can find 
this one at github.com slash h and drupal slash drupal app console i know it's kind of hard but i will share the slide so you can click the link it will be easier and who started this project okay this is this project was started by david flores another mexican developer you can find him as d mouse on twitter and myself last year okay we start talking about migrating some of the Symfon Symfony components to Drupal 8 based on our past experience with Symfony framework. But really, really, you can blame, you can blame this guy. You can, was not until we talked to Larry Garfield at uh, Drupal Camp Costa Rica, and he mentioned to us bringing the Symfony console component to Drupal 8 could be like really useful. And when we find, figure out or really like decide to start working on the project, and this conversation happened on September last year. And we really have our first, first prototype at Batcamp. Like, I think it was like end of October. So for now, what, what is out of the box? As now, the console have four generators, generators, which are module, controller, form, and plugin block. Mm, so several files in their content is generated, as well as directories. And when I mean directories, is the directories where those files live. So I, I will go ahead and, and have a list of some, some more in detail. So it takes care of generating module and info files. It also generates a PSR4 compliant directory structure for a module. It takes care of generating and registering routes on YAML files and map those routes to the controller and form PHP classes. It also create those classes adding namespaces, uses, and also extend and implement keywords when required. And I think for the last thing, support adding services using dependency injection, injection on cloud generation. It means if I need or if I request a service which is living on the service container, it takes care of, of, of injecting this service to your class on class generation if you specify to it. But I mean, I already mentioned what this tool can do for you, but let's talk about who can take advantage or benefit from using it. So who can benefit from using this? Well, module maintainers and developers can take advantage of using this because they can create and migrate contributed modules to Drupal 8. Also Drupal trainers and consultors because they can train developers on Drupal 8 and also Drupal shops because they can reduce the module development time when creating modules, Drupal 8 modules. Well, before jumping into the demo, I'd like to mention about what is, what is required to create a Drupal 8 module and show some of the changes now in, in Drupal 8. So the, the first thing, the first thing that, that I want to talk about is the directory structure is changed. Maybe it's not clear here enough, it's not clear enough, but we'll see. This, this is structure when, once we generate the module on the live demo. And as you can see here, there's, there's a new directory structure. Basically you have a lot of, I mean, you have some files on the, on the root directory, which is let's say, let's talk about an Acme dummy module. This is basically a hello world or hello Drupal 8 module. So we have, files within the route, which is like, let's say we have an info YAML file, we have a module file, the routing, and as you can see, most of the classes, or the, which is the object-oriented code that we will generate, generating, we'll, we will live in the SRC or source directory. And within this directory, we have a, a structure, way of like rearranging our classes. Let's say we have a controller directory, where all our controllers should live. We have a form directory, we have a plugin, and within plugin we have another level, which is like block, let's say, we, because blocks now are plugins. And we also have a test directory. And just for finishing this slide, we have the templates directory. So this is where the tweak templates must be created. So let me go ahead and show some of the content of, content of those files. For now we have the let's say Acme, because in this case is the module name, Acme info, that info, that YAML file. So basically the info, info YAML file is a replacement for the info file. This is a plain text file to store metadata about our module. In this case, we're showing the name, the type, and the description. 
we also say specify which is the core version that this module belongs to in the package. We also have the Atme module. Actually, the module file is pretty much the same as it was on Drupal 7. We now have a new file for registering or routes. It's called, in this case, acme.routing.yaml. Acme Basically, this YAML file contains the routing definitions, and we can define, we can say a route is a mapping of an URL to a controller or, or a callback function. In this case, we are showing two routes. One route is pointing to a controller, and another route is pointing to a form. And we also have a, let's say, a controller file. This file is living in src slash controller slash in the file, and the file name is defaultcontroller.php. And this file contains like a namespace declaration, which is telling you where, where this class could find this file, and has some uses. And also, as you can see here, it's, it's importing a controller-based class. And now, let's say it's defining a class default controller and extending the controller-based class that we import in the, in the line, in the upper line. And then this is adding a new method called hello with some code there. We will, we will, we will find out. We will generate some kind of similar code on our demo. So let me go ahead. And, and also now that template system, it's using Twig. So we create a new hello.html.twig file, which is living on the templates directory. And as you can see here, there's no PHP tags. It's only HTML plus. In this case, I'm using this, I'm, pa I'm passing this argument, this is the name argument to this trick template for rendering the value in order to do the rendering or the print. Instead of using an echo, I have this curly bracket. And inside those curly brackets, I have the, the argument name or the parameter name. So what this module, this dummy module, it's, it's doing is basically nothing other than just getting a parameter from the URL and passing to the tweak template and you're screening within, within prepending the hello world. I mean the hello world. So now that I talk, have a little talk about uh, the anatomy of a Drupal 8 module or the new Drupal way, let's, let's jump into the demo, which is always a bad idea, but let's, let's go ahead and do something like this. In order to, to have this demo done, we have some requirements. In this case, I already have my I already have my computer set up for this, so I already have my, a virtual machine running, like running PHP 5.4 and Apache and everything that I would need to running a Drupal 8 site. So if you want to if you want to use some if you have something like this, you can use this project, which is all is in Drupal.org/project/vm v as in virtual machine in Amazon machine. We will also need the Drupal console project, which is in drupal.org slash project slash console. And we will use an external library for, for printing my, my Twitter timeline. So basically, this the module I will be building, it's only, we'll be only using this external library for, for printing my timeline. So basically, there's, there will be a minimum amount of code within my controller and within the service that I will be creating, and basically, all of the logic will be residing in this external library. Okay, how, how do I clone my, how do I create, how do I clone this project? The only thing that I have to do is use git clone and then say I want the branch master for the virtual machine project. Once it gets cloned, you just go and, and type paper and app. This will take care of, of, of like preparing your, your virtual machine for, be, for working with, with Drupal 8. And how, how do I clone Drupal 8? How do I install Drupal 8 on my virtual machine? What I need to do is, is do a, C, I mean, do a CSS, I mean, a SSH connection. So I just type bigger and SSH. And once I'm inside my machine, I just go and change to the bigger and www directory. And then from there, I just do another git clone. But now I'm doing this git clone inside the virtual machine. I'm just cloning. Drupal 8 project, so I'm doing, I'm, what I'm requiring is a branch 8, 8x, okay, that's fine. Once it's, it gets downloaded, I just need to run drush 
is I, which is mean site install, specifying some, some options. Like in this case, I'm saying I want standard installation. I want I just want this, I'm just passing like what will be the database name and this and that. And you can also do this installation through the graphical interface, but if for the purpose of this demo, I mean it's always easier to do it within like Brush. So basically, now I, I do have my virtual machine ready, I have Drupal 8 ready, and I need to install the console. So in order to do that, it's the same thing. I need to SSH into my Vagrant box. So I just go Vagrant, SSH. And then now I switch to the directory where I do have my Drupal, Drupal 8 site installed and run this, this, this command we have here. I set the bin directory, composer bin directory, and then say composer require and set my requirement. And in my requirement, it's Drupal slash console semicolon dev master. Basically what I'm doing is I'm requiring this project to get downloaded via composer. Once I have this done, what well, I can easily go bin from my from my Drupal 8 site, go bin slash console, and I can see in what what the in the console, the console commands that are available. Okay, and in the end, in order to be able to use this library, I'm gonna add this library to the to my project. I'm just gonna add, I just can go like and type composer require and say, and just in this case, specify the, the requirement library that I want to use. In this case, it's ttools, or just add it to my composer file and then run composer update. So from there, from there, what, what I do have now, it's my virtual machine ready to work. I have my Drupal installation working. I have my my I mean com, my Drupal console project installed and my titles library and downloaded. And now let's see what the generators are and how this Drupal console can help me building modules. Let me jump into my terminal. Well, what I'll do is something like if I go bin console, what I will see. What I'll see it's what this what the comments available are. In this case, we have generate controller, generate form, generate module, and generate plugin. Let's use the first one. In this case, let's go generate, and I want to generate a module. We're gonna call this module T Tools, the same name as, as the library we're using. So let's say I want to call this T Tools, hit enter. It's asking me for the path. Let's say I want that one. I want to call, I want to add a description. Let's say titles module, module. And then let's say with the package, other is fine, the core, generate controller. No, I don't want to generate a controller from here. I want to generate, I mean, just using the console, I mean, the, the other command. Generate a test, I say yes. Setting files, I say no. It's asking me for generate the whole directory structure. I'm gonna say yes for this. It is asking me for confirming the generation. If I go here, if I go LL or listing my directories, I, I will see I only have admin and console modules. So if I go generate yes here, then switch back to to my module directory. What my modules are for this 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 site, now I will see I have T tools here. And if I go and say, if I go execute tree within the T tools module, I will see how, how this the whole directory is created now. Remember that it asked me for generate the whole directory structure and I say yes, so it's here. The direct directory is here. It also takes care of generating the info jamo file in the T tools module. We will see the content of those files later on. Let's, let's go ahead and generate now. Let's generate a, a controller. I'm gonna generate a basic controller. And now the first question that will that will pop up, it's the module name. So I can select from the modules that I already have installed. In this case, I have Acme and Titles. I'm gonna say I want this controller generate within Titles directly. I'm gonna call default controller, it's totally fine with me, generate unit test. Yeah, fine. Adding a service. No, in this case, I don't want to add a service. We will see later on. So say no. And update the routing file. I say yes. And if we go back to here and go another three, we can see now the routing JAML file is generated. 
we can see we have a default controller class generated. And let me go back again then. And now, now let me generate a form. I want to generate a form. Same thing. It's going to ask me for the module name. I will say titles again. In this case, I'm going to call this settings form. Settings form. And adding services, I'll say no. But in this case, it's asking me for generate a form structure. I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to start adding some fields in for, for, for this form. I, don't know, I want this consumer key field. The fields that I'll be adding here will be the fields that I need for interact with this titles library. So I'm going to head and add about six fields now. Consumer key. I'll say it's the machine name. It's, it's, Recommend me a, a machine name. I'll say I'm fine with that. And for now, I'm specifying the field type for the form. What I can choose for the ones available in Drupal, like range, number, email, date time. For the purpose of this demo, I'm going to say text field. Okay, I have consumer, a consumer, consumer secret field. Same thing, I can just choose between the different fields. I just want text for now. And then say access token, same thing, machine name. I want text field. Access token secret, same thing. I want text. OK, I want a screen name, which it will be like the Twitter account that will be pulling the timeline. It's the same thing, it's like text. And just for the last field that I will adding will be a numeric field. I will say limit in this case, limit. And remember, I told you that we have different field types here on email, date time, date, color, text field, telephone range, and number. So I want to specify this as a number, hit enter. Once I don't want to add any more fields, I just hit enter. And it's asking me again for updating the routing file. I say yes. And if we go back to my module directory and go like three, I can see now we have a settings form. And we cannot see it right now, but that routing, the routing JAMO file will be like updating. We'll see later. So let's jump into the last generation. Let's say I want to generate a plugin block. Same story. Here, G tools. Then say default block. No, let's say, let's call default. Let's call this my uh, titles. Titles default block. Okay. And let's say titles. Add a description for this one. Titles default block and then say adding a service no i don't want services here say no confirm generation yes okay it's if we go here we will see now we have a this t tools default block class so let, let me go back to the site installation and run this drosh cr for cleaning or rebuilding the catch and once since some well, let's in the meantime let's go and open the titles directory to see what's what the code how it looks the code that we just generated okay we have this editor here and the first field i mean the first file that we will open is the info jamo file remember the the values that we said when we generated we say the name will be like T-Tools. This is a module. So we add a description, which is like T-Tools module, the core in the package. So it's, everything is here. And it also takes care of generating the, the module file. So we have the first was the info file. So now we have the, the second one that we are looking at is the module file. As we can see, it takes care of creating this PHP, I mean this module file here and adding two hooks, help and the hook team. And also, it's when we generate the, the form and the controller, it also takes care of registering those classes within this file. 
So we have here, we have the titles, hello, let's say the title hello controller, which is pointing to a path, which will be something like titles, hello, and then a parameter that we'll be sending. And this, this, this is the path. Then this path is pointing to a specific method or to a specific controller, which only is, the controller is a method within a class. And it's, it means it's pointing to a hello method within this default controller class. And as you can see, it's, it's, it's pointing to a underscore content because this is a controller. In the case of the form, this is pointing to an underscore form. And we also have a route here, which will be something like T tool settings settings form. Now let's go ahead and open this, the controller file. So as we can see here, the namespace was added here. It's Drupal Titles Controller that I use was added. So it's it's importing the controller class. And also takes care of doing creating the class. So this class is called default controller and it's extending a controller based class. It also takes care of adding this method. Remember that we when we have when we see the route definition, this is pointing to a hello method. And it's 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 having this argument here, the name argument. So we have it here. We are passing this as an argument to our method. And we have this is real we're returning like hello and the name we pass on it. Then we have the form also, the form that was generated. Remember the the or routing, this is pointing to to form settings form, which is this one. As we can see here, this is this this, this class was generated it, it, it could have, have more code than the controller. So we have this class which is called settings form. And it's extending a config form base and also adding this method, the get form ID. It also takes care of, of adding or building the form. Remember that we set some fields for it. So we add consumer key, consumer secret, access token, and access token secret. Remember those 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 mean fields for the form were set as text field. And remember the, the, the very last one, it's it was a number which is called limit, is here. So the whole form definition is, is here. And we also add this, it's it's, it's getting from the form. I mean the previous values. So if you if you already submit this form, it will take care of getting those values and insert it in, within your form field using this default value, getting 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 the specific value from from the settings from the config. Sorry. And how those values get set? So we also add this submit form method, which is taking is taking care of of submitting the form and also once the form gets submitted, it takes the values from the form and set it back to the to the config. So we have something like we build the form, and we also add the method for submitting this form and setting all those values. And for the last thing that I will show you, it's we have this, this plugin, the blog plugin. So we have something like this here. We add the, it, it gets the class was, it get added. It also takes care of adding the namespace, the namespace where this class it is, is living. It takes care of adding the blog base import and so which is because it's doing this class, it's extending this the block, block base class. And also take care of adding the build method. For for now, this this block is only returning titles default block, but it also takes care of adding the annotations here. So it's it's telling you this plugin is a block, it's adding a new an ID, and it's adding a label. So if we go to back here to my to my it's it's finishing the reveal, so let's go back to my browser and let's go back here. If I go here and go to oh you know what I didn't do something real important I didn't enable <coughs> so I need to enable it first in order to see to see it working. So let me enable this. Once once get enabled, I'll go back to my browser and, and look for the paths. Remember the, the routes that we were talking about? That I, was, I was talking about. So I will go to the route which is T tools, hello, and then pass an argument and we should see hello and the argument that we are passing. And then we can go to the to the T tool settings settings form and we can see the form with the fields render. And in the end, we can go to the block administration part page, so we can see how how this how and assign this block to a, to a region. So for now, it's still working. 
obviously it's going to take too, too long. So in the meantime, I don't know if any questions. Okay, it's done. And let me move back to my browser. So it means if I go titles, hello, let's say Drupalcon, we should see hello Drupalcon happening, showing on my screen. Yeah, as you can see here, this is Drupalcon. Let, let me go and change a little. Woohoo! Let me change here. Let me add this. This is too bad because I'm adding markup within the response instead of adding a template. But I mean. All right, kids, nobody do this at home. <laughs> and let's go back and reload. While and you're reloading, Jesus, Chris. Charlton wanted you to point out and underscore that uh, the console doesn't require Drush. It's just how you're doing it today. No, no, it's not because I'm, are we are using the Symfony, I mean, console component. So it is not tied to Drush. I mean, we are happy to to do a Drush integration. Okay, we have our controller working here. So if we go here and say, hey, hello, Jam. Guess what will happen? It will say hello jam. Yeah, it works. Our first controller works. So remember we have this settings settings form. If we go to the route, we will see the form render here. As we can see, we have the fields that we set here. So let me let me go ahead and fill those. Let me add the values to those fields, the values that, that the plugin will require me to. Please don't use this value <laughs> at home. Right, go ahead. I will reset it. My keys once then was finished. I'm just adding what the plugin requires me to to authenticate and connect to my Twitter account. It's a read-only, so there's no problem. I'm gonna say I want to load my Twitter and say I wanna see 15 tweets. Okay, now save configuration. What is happened? It will take care of setting those values from the form to the config. So the next time the form gets loaded, like in the sub, after this submit happens, it will, the defaults by the will it pull in from the configuration and set it here, okay? So we have our controller and we have the settings form. Let, let's go ahead and move to the, to the admin block part so we can see or the block that we just generate and add it to here. So we have T tools here. And we have this block. Let me add this one to the sidebar a second. Go ahead and see. I want to display the tile. It's totally fine. Save block. And save it again. Just make sure. And let me go back to my home directory. And this should show now a sidebar with this little block without any content other than the title, which is returning titles default block. So for now, so far now we have our controller, which is like titles, hello, and then win argument. We have the block render here, the plugin block here, and we have this the form here. So let's go ahead and move a little ahead and add more complex code, little complex code. And let's implement the titles library. Okay, sounds good. Now I will go ahead and create a service class. So I'm just gonna copy from here and create a, create a new class. Mm -hmm. Let me create a file service. I'm gonna call this file ttools.php. I have the coding here, so I'm gonna paste it here. What I'm doing here, it's it's creating a, a new PHP class. This class will, will be will be declared as a service. And through the service on the service declaration here, which is on the digital services YAML file, I'm gonna take care of injecting the config factory to be able to read the configuration from the from the config. So I'm gonna create. So I'm gonna call T tools Slack. 
dot services jaml fine say here so what i'm saying here it's this will be a service this will be the name titles dot app and this is pointing to a class the class is, is, is living within drupal titles which is my module name service and titles is the class name and i'm passing as an argument the config factor here okay if, we, if i go here and open my service class you will see how i'm getting this on the constructor i'm passing the config factory and just setting within my local variable and also yeah basically and then, then i have a protected method here for getting the the app or in, instantiating the titles app in the case it's, it's not instantiated it takes care of getting the values from the config here and then create a create a config array of values and passing on the constructor if it's already i mean i mean was already instantiated it's going to return the object and then adding a public method called get user timeline this method will take care of of, pull, of calling the get user timeline method within the library the titles library so let me go ahead i have this i have so i have what what i do have i have my service i have my service registration and i will go ahead and add this calling a template because i don't want to do the same thing that i did on my previous example which is bad so i'm gonna add a hook here and i want this to call timeline page and it's calling a template called timeline it should reside here i have the code here on the next slide let me copy my timeline html code here let's say time line that html h twig set it here and this template is calling another file it's called tweet html so let me copy the content of the next file right here copy go right away here and let me add this now we have Timeline, let me add this new file, which is called tweet.html.twig. Add it here, and in the end, let me add this CSS, just in order to make this look kind of look good. So I'm gonna add it right here. I'm gonna add it right here, fine. I'll put my assets within assets slash CSS slash T tools dot CSS which is fine I'm gonna set it here save and I will go ahead and clear gossip drash CR okay I'm gonna clear it I'm gonna rebuild the catch now it's gonna take care of registering my service and once this this is done I will go ahead and generate a new controller but remember the, the last time you asked me for for um, adding a service in this case I will add is well I will add a service and the service that I will add is the one I just created let me let me just finish so it takes little little time I mean so far any any other questions John yes Eduardo Garcia has a question. So he asks, does this module that you're making work with the current current contributed or core modules in Drupal 8? And if that changes, will it affect the, uh, can you update that or do you have to create a new module? Yeah, for now it's working with, with modules living within the module directory. Yeah, no, with no, not with modules living within the core within the core directory, and yeah, it's. I mean, you can create a new module or add. Like in this case, I create the titles module, right? And now, after I create this one, I can keep adding like more functionality. Like in this case, let me go ahead, and I will add a new. I will add a new controller. So it's let's say might be this is a, isn't a module that already exists, not the one I just created. So I can just go and generate a controller from a specific module. That's it, it, you can add ex, I mean, functionality to a existing module. Like in this case, in, and how do you do that? 
when once it starts, it, it starts asking you for the module that you have, and it takes care of loading all of the module that you have installed within your contributed, which is like module directory. So I'm going ahead and say I want to create a T tools. I want to call this timeline controller and test yeah. So when ask me for adding a service, I will say yes this time, and I will remember remember how we call what was the name that we give to the service, which is this one. So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm updating a module that I already have generated. That's one. I don't know if that answered the questions. I'm gonna say routing, yes. Let me go on now. And since for now the routing generation, it's it's like it's always the default. We, I wanna change the route and say timeline here. I'm gonna change the method here to something like stream. And I will go ahead and open the, the, the new controller. As you can see, compared with the previous one, which was only the default and there's no services injected, the code is, is different. So in this case, it takes care of adding all of the uses, it takes care of adding not only the extent controller-based class, it's also taking care of implementing this other class, the container injection interface class. And it's also remember that I that I say yes and I say I specify a service. So this is taking care of adding adding the container and extracting from the container the service that I'm that I'm requesting. We're requesting in this case a Titles app. So it's taking care of passing this to the constructor and then setting locally on my class here. So what I'm gonna do is replace here for the stream, which is the name that I give to to my on the routing declaration, let's say stream here, and whoops, and let me let me go ahead and replace the code here. I have the code here. So how do I how do I use that, that service that I just created? The only thing that I have to do is something like this. Go ahead here and and get from from this Titles app service that I just injected and just use, use the get user timeline method. And let me go ahead and go back and double check my routing and let me call this one to something different, machine name to stream. So what I'm doing here is I have my routing here. It will be titles timeline that we point it will point into the controller that you generate and what I did is change the method name. Just change the method name here, which is this one, and just removing the argument because I don't need it. And within this method, I'm just adding the code for calling from the server that I just injected this method. So let me go ahead and guess what? I need to do another Drush CR. So we have a few time for questions now that it's rebuilding the catch. Let me go ahead and see the questions here. What? I think we're clear on the questions right now. Seems like no one is understanding what's happening here. <laughs> well, it's either that or you're, you're covering all the issues. <laughs> Hopefully it's the second one. <laughs> yeah, so once yes, yeah, actually, it's, Drupal is not that slow. It's it's like my virtual machine. It's it's really slow because I use mess with with my with my synchronization. So I just upgrade to background one six, I think so, and then I was not able to to R to do the R. I mean the R sync on the sync file synchronization. So I go back to NFS. So let me go back here and it's suppose if everything goes well. If I go something like this and go T tools and then timeline, something should happen. Yay, it's working. What do we have here is we have this route, which is titles timeline, 
it's pointing to a controller, and the controller is returning my, returning my timeline. So what basically what the tweak file is doing here, it's calling if it's my if it's tweet that I have that I did myself, it put my my avatar on it. If it's not, take care of, of loading the the retweet data from it. So that's why I use add two tweak template files. One is for iterating the the stream result, and the other one is for deciding if it's a tweet or a retweet. So if we go ahead a little more and want to do the same thing for a plugin block as you can as we can see it's exactly the same code so the, the way we call a service it's it's pretty much the same the only thing we need to do is go right here and go then console then generate go plugin go block and say i want to generate or i want to add a new block to a module that i already have on it or have created in this case the tools module Say yes. I want to call this time. I want to call this tools timeline block, right? And then it's going to ask me for the name. I'm going to say tools time timeline block. And I will say add in a service. Yes, the service I want to add is the one I just add. Generation, yes, if I go right away and to, to the block, I mean to the, yeah, to the block, which is this one, I mean this one, as we can see, it's also different than the two different ones, so it's adding all of the uses, it's extending the class, the proper class, it's implementing the other class, taking care of doing all the code that you needed here, and the only thing I need to change is right here, instead of returning the default value, I'm going to return this. It's the same thing. I'm just getting from my titles app service that I just injected, injecting here. I'm just injecting here from the container, passing from the container here, and just passing to the constructor. And we have here, we have the use of our service here. We go save here and go ahead and do a trash CR once again. And now we will see this blog, which is our admin blog page. And we will be able to, to to set it up or to assign to to show within within our site, and it will be pulling the the timeline also from the Twitter or Twitter. And remember that the settings that I did on the on the form, I say like limit fifteen, so that's why we only see like this specific numbers of tweets here. Let me go back. Let's wait, let's wait. You know, you said it yourself about doing a live demo. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me go back again here. There we are. And there, let me again to the block admin page. We should see the new block. Yeah, in the, in the meantime, it gets load. It's loading. We will also add the functionality for registering your uh, command. So you can even if you create are you creating if you are creating a module, you can register your own console commands to be to be like registered through that Symfony console. And we're also working in like more like plugins, like gen we are, we have a little I mean a little roadmap where we're planning to add like for for, mat for matters and widget from it. So let me go ahead and I have titles timeline block here. I'm gonna set it here on my sidebar second region. I'm go save block. And save it again, and then move to the home page. And, and hopefully, if it works, we will see my timeline on the sidebar. If I go to my home link. Yeah, I can see my timeline on the sidebar. 
Woo-hoo. So now we can read. Yeah, it's great. So we can reuse the service. I mean, I mean, it's just fine. And, and basically, we can change something like values here. Let's say I want to say like 25. Or I want to say I want to duplicate duplic on here. Isaac Sierra wants to know, is it required to run the console within an instance of Drupal, or can it be run from outside with Drush? Can be run from outside as Drush. Yeah, we, we have a pull request for running as a standalone, not within a Drupal site. But you know, we haven't, I mean, actually, actually we, we did the, the request. We are still having unsure of, of, of being like that. I mean, until we find a real use case for it. But yeah, it's, you, can, you can do that. So basically, let me go ahead. And as you can see, now we have more tweets because I say 25. If I go back and refresh to the timeline page, and we can see the both the two changes that I did on the on the form. So I replace my user for Drupalicon, which is now here, and we are listing it tweets from Drupalicon instead of mine. And we are seeing 25 instead of 15. So I think that's the demo is done. Let's see if someone has a question. Hey, that <laughs> was really, really, really interesting. So that <clears throat> So that um, lets me get down to the important stuff of building my modules um, and takes care of all of that new, interesting symphony stuff along the way, too. Thank you so much for yeah, yeah. taking the time to do this session with us. Any final uh, points you want to make? You want to do a shameless plug for something else you're up to? No, just, 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 I mean, add, as you were mentioned, take, basically the, the tool takes care of adding all the, the co- I mean, all the wrapper code that you, that you need to generate a module, controller, plugin, or form, and you take care of only for you adding the, the code for what your business logic will be. And, and, and really add, add something to add is like, but the, the way I did it here is like, I think it's basically, I'm just reusing a li- external library, so I don't know. Just to, it's kind of just kind of have my controller with a little amount, little amount of code or little lines of code, and basically make this this library living outside of Drupal makes the library be useful within any other projects like like as I mentioned at the beginning like Symfony, Silex, and like Laravel and all other any other PHP framework. And no, I think I'm I'm all done. And hope, thank you again for inviting me to your virtual Drupal camp. I think it's a, I mean, a great effort for showing sessions, I mean, for people. That might be sessions that you don't see when you attend a camp, or maybe you are not a, you were not able to attend any, any camp or something. So thank you again for doing this. Cool. It's, uh, it's certainly my pleasure. Take care. Go enjoy your sunny, warm day. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> my, day is, uh, my day is actually just finished. So thanks, man. See you sometime soon. Take care, everyone. Yeah. Thanks, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Take care.